Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. Today I want to talk about the project page inside of Studio One Professional. Now I say professional because a lot of the features I show you in these videos are both in the artist version and the professional version. This is one that's only in the professional version. If you own artist, you can upgrade to professional at a discounted rate. You don't have to pay the full price. However, this is a pro only feature. What is the project page? Well, first of all, we gotta talk about what mastering is because the project page is essentially the mastering page inside of Studio One. Most other DAWs, I can't think of one that has something like this. You do your mix, your recording and your mixing in that system and you can mix it down to a stereo file. But then for mastering, you have to either open a new song file and bring stereo files in, or you use a completely separate mastering software like WaveLab, things like that, to do the mastering. Nothing wrong with those, but at Personas, we decided to add the mastering feature set into Studio One itself. So let me explain how it works. Remember we talked about the song page. This is where you do your recording and your mixing. Project page is where you do your mastering. Now what's really cool about this is the two of these can talk to one another. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. So I can work on a song, I can record it, I can mix it, and when the mix is done, or really any time in, in the process of doing the project, I can say, add this song to this mastering page add this song page to this project page. And what Studio One will do is it will bounce down the song, render out a stereo mix of that song, and it will place it into the project page. And now the two are linked. What that means is if I go back later and update this song, maybe turn the vocal up, for example, and I save it and then I go away, and then the next day I come back and I open up this project page, it will say, hey, this song has been updated. Do you want me to update the final mix inside the project page? And I can say yes or no. If I say yes, this is where it's really cool, and I'll show you this in just a second, it will go over here, open up the song, automatically bounce the song down, and then replace the existing file in the project page with the latest mix. Now, imagine doing that in any other system. If you go make a change to a mix, you've got to re-render that mix, you've got to go find that file that you re-rendered, you've got to put that into the session that you were using for mastering, get rid of the old one, hide it somehow, bring the new one in, uh, make sure that it has the same plugin, same level settings. You don't have to do any of that with the project page, and that's what makes it so cool. All right, let me show you how it works. It's really simple, really powerful. <music> One of the things I hate about some YouTube videos is they'll explain something, then they'll explain the exact same thing again. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. So here is a song. Let's say this is song number one of a five song EP that I'm working on. Well, I can come over here back to the start page and I can click create new project and we'll call this my amazing EP because it's gonna be amazing. Everything in here is at 48 and I'm gonna say okay. Now, this is the blank project page. It has a lot of the same things you're used to. It does look a little bit different. I'll show you around in just a second after we bring a song in. So right now, there's nothing here. It's just blank, okay? Let's go back to the start page, and let's see. We have a song open already, so let's open that song up. This is the song I want to add to that project. Since the project is already open, I can come over here to Song, Add to Project, and right there, all my open projects are right here. I can create a new project, or I can pick a recent project from my recent history. I'm gonna add it to my amazing EP. Now look what happens. It automatically opens up that project again. It says, I'm gonna add this. Do we need to update the mastering files? Yes, because this is the first time I'm adding it. I hit okay. It goes back to the song page and starts to render a mix down of that song. And then it bounces back over to the project page and says, we've updated this file for you. Real quickly, there is a setting inside of preferences right here. If you want it to use real-time processing to do that every time, you can just check this box and it will. Otherwise, if you're okay with offline bounce or offline uh, rendering, it'll do that as well. All right, one quick thing. <laughs> this already looks mastered because I already had a limiter on the mix bus there. So just don't worry about that. This is That was for another video. But now I have this song in this project. I can zoom in and I can see the song here. I can trim the ends. I can work on the crossfade or the fades at the beginning and the end of the song. And then I can also hit F7 to open up my bank of plugins and I can put an EQ there on the insert for this channel. And then I can also put things like a limiter 
on the main output. So the way this works, you can have multiple songs that'll be listed right here. Plugins on a per song basis go here. And then in the master section, we can put inserts both before and after this master fader there. Very, very cool. So we can have individual plugins per, and then I usually like to have a master limiter on that final output fader. In fact, let me show you. I actually like the fab filter lately. So I actually use the fab filter L2 there as my limiter that I'm using during mastering. Really, really cool. One of the great things about the project page is the metering involved. We can change between a bunch of different types and styles of metering, both down here on the level meter and also up here on the spectrum analyzer. Lots of really cool, look at that, really cool different ways to visualize what's happening in your mix. From here, let's say we add the other four songs from this EP. Once we're ready to go, we can simply hit digital release and we can render all five at the same time. So it will spit out MP3, Wave, even Og Vorbis, M4A, lots of different file types. We can just set it to, hey, go render those, and it'll do that for us either in real time or offline, and we don't have to be here telling it to render each song at a time. It'll do them all at once. In addition to that, we could burn CDs from here. If you happen to have a CD burner attached to your computer, I don't. We can even export a DDP file, which is a typical standard file that you upload to places like disc makers and other places that will actually physically be reproducing your CDs, they'll ask for a DDP file and we can create that as well. It has all the proper formatting and everything else you might need. But here's the cool part. Okay, let's say we finished this, we went, took a nap, came back, opened up Studio One fresh. And let's say we said, you know what? That vocal is messed up on this one. So we open up the song and we come over here and we do, we make a couple of changes. First of all, let's say, oh, you know what? I forgot I accidentally had a limiter enabled on that X, on that output there. Let's turn that off. And then also this vocal needs to turn down a couple of dB. And I say, okay, that feels a lot better. A couple of options here. The first option, I can come to song and I can say, update the mastering file. And it will update what file the project page is using. That's one way to do it. But I'm going to forget. Let's say it's a five or ten song project. I may not remember what which songs I've worked on and which ones I haven't. Well, guess what? I'm closing that song out. It is officially closed. Now I'm going to open up the mastering project for that. Remember, it's called My Amazing EP. You can tell the different song files look like this. Mastering files or project files look like this. Let's open that up. And, oh, I have a little pop-up window. It says the VIP challenge, so whatever, this song has been updated. And I can say, yes, update it, or I can leave it alone. Also up here, you'll see the little wrench next to this file has turned red. That tells me this has been updated since the last time you used, you were in this mastering session, just so you know. Well, I do want it to update. Now look what happens. I click OK. It goes and opens the song file. I didn't touch anything. I just said OK. Opens the song file. It starts rendering the song for me and will let me know when it's finished. Boom, it rendered it. You can see there's not a limiter there. Now the waveform looks a lot more sane uh, and I can go about my day. What's great about this, as you've, you've probably already assumed, it will do this times however many songs are in the session. So if I have 10 songs here and I've made mixed tweaks to all 10 of them, all I have to do is make the tweaks in the song, save it and close it. Then at the end of that tweaking session, I can come in here, open up this project and either click that okay or if I accidentally miss it, I can just come up here to project and I can say, update mastering files. And it will go through, and any song that's been updated, it will automatically do this process for every song. So if there's 10 songs, and I want to go to lunch, I can say, <laughs> I got food on the brain. I can say, do that, and then I can go to lunch. And it'll do all of that updating for me, and it'll keep it all in sync. I don't have to keep a separate document reminding me which versions of which songs are in the mastering session. It will always be up to date, and it will let me know when it's not up to date. Now there are a couple of applications for this. The first and most obvious is if you're both mixing and mastering the songs, this makes that really easy. But it's also a great way to corral the projects you're working on, even if you're not gonna be doing either the mixing or the mastering. Case in point, if I have a client over here working on a, a five song EP, we only have two days to work on it, or maybe they're only here for one day and we do five or six songs, at the end of the day, they might say, hey, I've got a three, this, this literally happened, hey, I've got a, three, four hour drive back to Memphis, I would love to listen to these on the way back. 
This makes that really, really easy to do. I can quickly, at the end of each song, as we're working on it, I'll just add it to the project page, not do anything else. And then at the end of the day, even if we've gone back and we've recorded new things, I can go into that project page and I can say, hey, update everything. And it'll update it with the latest rough mix that we have from that recording day. Then I can say, hey, spit out MP3s into a Dropbox folder. And it'll do that. And I can just email or text that Dropbox link to her and then she can listen on her phone on the way home. That to me is probably the thing I use this the most for or the, the where I find even more value is the ability to take something that we just did and render out five to 10 mixes of the day's work without having to sit here for three hours rendering each one and then corralling them all together. It just, I know it sounds like I'm maybe exaggerating how long it takes, but it re this really does Compared to any other workflow I've used, this really does save a ton of time, uh, which, I mean, time is one of the biggest currencies we have in home studios, right? Whether you're doing this in a pro studio for a living or you're doing this on your own projects and you're not making a dime from it, so time doesn't matter, but it does. The less time you can spend on managing things, the more time you can spend making the music. And that's going to help you gain momentum and probably get things done quicker, which means you'll be able to do more music, which means you'll, you'll be able to build your body of work. It's this whole cycle that efficiency allows. And that's why eight, nine years ago, I switched to Studio One for my own personal use, and I haven't looked back since. It helps me stay in the music, and then it takes care of all the other stuff, and that makes me super happy. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. As always, please like, comment, subscribe so you can catch up on all the videos we have here at the Personas channel. Got a lot of cool stuff happening and even more cool stuff coming in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.